Welcome to Bear News, I'm Kristen Scopelidge. It's Black History Month, and what better way to celebrate than with some good old homemade mouth-watering soul food? Students and staff came together to enjoy some soul food at the Marcus Garvey Cultural Center last Thursday night. The menu featured finger licking fried chicken, fried fish, mac and cheese, and peach cobbler. All that delicious food had a people waiting in line that extended out of the room. The event was put on by the United Black Government on campus. Their vice president, Darian Gray, tells us that the annual event is in an effort to bring light to their culture, especially during Black History Month. After two weeks of repetitive snowstorms, the UNC Maintenance Department cleared up 18 miles of snow piles across campus. The Maintenance Department coordinator explains what the process takes to get roads across campus cleaned up. They have big equipment come in and pile it up for us, and then we have to haul the piles off. We use all in-house equipment to haul it off. You know, we've been at this for two days, hauling big piles of snow off, getting it out of the lots. Many students and faculty members are wondering why the cleaning process has taken very long. Well, you know, we can only do so much. We've got to keep the lots all cleaned off. And then when we get them where they can get through, then we start taking the piles out. Reporting from UNC campus, I'm Jocelyn Costa Martinez, Bear News. Last week, UNC held its second annual Bears Dessert Cooking Competition. The competition is put on by the Classified Staff Council and Professional Administrative Staff Council and is open to the entire UNC community and the public. Entries at this year's competition range from limbo bars to peanut butter cookies with oatmeal. UNC Director of Strength and Conditioning and reigning champion Dinky Williams entered his famous Bears Victory Cheesecake, a family recipe handed down from his mom. Taste testers that paid a $3 fee at the door determined this year's winners. Williams Pies, Jael Escobel's Lemon Bars, Sabrina Hattar's Cakes, and Jared Harley's Chocolate Covered Fruits were all declared winners. The Be a Sweetheart Donate Blood Drive encourages UNC students to participate in donating blood to help out the North Colorado Medical Center and their blood donor services. The Natural and Health Sciences Student Council, NHS, is an organization on campus that is open to student representatives from each of NHS's five schools and three departments. I got the chance to speak to Stevie Mergner, Secretary of ASLS, who elaborated more on the blood drive. I'm a junior here at UNC and I'm a major in speech pathology and audiology. I am the secretary of the Natural and Health Sciences Student Council, and we do two blood drives every year, um, one in the fall and one in the spring semester to help out with NCMC's blood drive. Um, you can go to the camp to the actual hospital if you want to do a walk-in, or if you can schedule it up, we can do you in the, the bus. Um, one of the best ways to be involved if you're a Natural and Health Science major is to definitely join our student council. We do a whole lot of things in fundraising for our, our community and for our college, and it's a really good resume builder, especially if you want to go to the event. Reporting from the UNC parking lot, I'm Carlton Lawrence, Bear News. Students gathered in Gunter Hall Friday night for a workshop on Shakespeare and love. The crowd wasn't big, but the students were excited to be there, some even dressed up. Michael LaMonaco, a Shakespeare enthusiast, spoke and also shared some lines from his new book called That Shakespeare Kid. After some fun Shakespeare facts, the audience participated in a 15-minute rendition of Hamlet. The group also attempted to break some world records. The first was a 32-second rendition of Macbeth, which they broke at 29 seconds. The second was an attempt to break the record for the largest Romeo and Juliet balcony scene ever performed, which is set at 160 people. Unfortunately, there were not enough people, but they still had fun. They plan to try and break the record next time LaMonaco is in town. 
The Cranford Cove Tea Tavern graciously hosted the Graduate Student Association Social last week. Its small, intimate, and central location gave graduate students a comfortable feel. UNC's graduate program is filled with students from all sorts of backgrounds from all over. With most students commuting to campus, it's no wonder community is hard to come by. Thankfully, GSA is working hard to schedule events that will hopefully result in giving graduate students a life outside of their studies. Jamie Incrisano, GSA president, is one of the advocates for this change. Uh, this event tonight is to just give graduate students an outlet to socialize and meet each other. We tend to get really focused in on our program, our academic programs and the work we're doing, our research, and we don't always get a chance to explore our community and meet other people. So this is just an event to showcase the local business and meet each other and relax from classes. For students like Hannah Greer, this grad social was just what she needed. Um, the reason I came tonight is I don't know a lot of people in the Greeley area because I recently moved here, so I was hoping to kind of meet some new people and socialize. So. This is Amanda Nez reporting from Bear News. With the spring concert coming up in March, I wanted to learn more about how a country artist got selected this year. I had the opportunity to speak to UPC member Shanice Clark, PR and marketing coordinator, about this process. Um, usually it's, it's a various amount of factors like the budgeting and the availability of the artist and like the date that we choose. But this year we tried to do a voting like kind of student input thing where students voted on an artist and a genre. I decided to get students opinions on what they thought about Love and Theft coming to perform next month. Um, I thought it was exciting. It was definitely different because a lot of the artists in previous years had not been country, but I thought it was cool that they got some variety. First I thought it was a good change. I like Macklemore. I thought his stuff is fun, but the idea of always doing the same thing kind of can be boring, and I think country is a good way to turn it up a bit. Some students were enthusiastic for change, while others, not so much. Um, well, I just feel like last year, the concert was something like with Macklemore coming, uh, was something that everybody was looking forward to. It was more like a party. People could dance and could groove to it. Uh, who are they? Who is that? Well, it's a country artist I've never heard of. It's a little dampening. And finally, some last words from Shanice for the students who weren't so fond of this spring's pick. We do, we do try really hard um, as far as trying to make people happy. We are trying really hard to use the resources and give a quality concert. I hope that for those of you who like country, enjoy the concert. <laughs> Reporting from the UC, Corina Hierro, Bear News. As the UNC men's basketball team fights to stay undefeated at home, an overtime thriller against Montana last Thursday night put that winning streak on the line. As Butler Hancock has been for the home game, students in the community cheered loud and proud for the Bears. This game made it on national television all because of a play by UNC's Derek Barden. Just before getting knocked down, Barden shoots the ball and makes the shot. That play was number 7 on ESPN's top 10 plays of the night. Pretty incredible if you ask me. Just before the end of the second half, junior forward Tim Huskisson makes the monster dunk to bring the score up 77-74 UNC. Montana responded with a 3 to bring the game into OT. This 3-point jump shot by senior guard Tate Unruh followed by another helped bring the Bears up in over overtime. A foul on Jordan Wilson by Montana's Mario, Mario Dunn cost the Grizzlies this game, and to celebrate the 89-86 victory by UNC, students rushed the court at the buzzer. Montana State came to town Saturday in an attempt to hand UNC their first home loss of the year. The Bears got the crowd into it early with this alley-oop from Tevin Spihove to Derek Barden. Early in the second half with the Bears down five, Jordan Wilson knocks down this three to pull the Bears within two. The Bears couldn't miss in the second half as Svihovec knocks down this pull-up jumper just inside the arch. The Bears shot 80% or 80 excuse me, from the field in the second half to cap off a comeback victory. This Tate Unruh 3 would put the Bears up 9 with just over 3 minutes. The final score in this one was Bears 83, Bobcats 73. Since the men stayed in town for some at-home action, the women's basketball team headed up north to take on the two Montanas last weekend. Early in the first half against the Montana Grizzlies, the Bears trailed 23-9 at one point, but caught up to leave the score 30-23 at the half. Sophomore guard Jamie Daru led the Bears with 15 points, and Kelly Cole of Montana totaled 18 points. UNC shot 18-44, of 44, or 40 
40.9% from the field. The Grizz shot 25 of 58 for a 43.1 field goal percentage. Montana totaled 19 rebounds and scored 22 points off turnovers. The Bears defense picked it up in the second half and managed to hold Montana to 2 for 18 from the three-point line. Despite the strong second-half efforts, the Bears couldn't gain the lead, losing 61-65. Against Montana State last Saturday, the Bears put some big numbers on board wanting to win this one. Stephanie Lee led all scorers with a career-high 36 points and shot 8, for, uh, eight of 8 from the field. Junior guard Lindsey Mallon contributed to Lee's success with 10 assists. The Bears outshot the Bobcats with a 52 field goal percentage versus their 33.9. UNC out-rebounded the Bobcats 48-26, the team's largest rebounding margin since joining the Big Sky Conference. These big numbers and strong efforts brought the Bears to win this one 65-59. Have you ever wondered who the student dancing atop the student section of basketball games is? It's none other than senior men's golfer Ben Kruger. As students packed Butler Hancock with roaring atmosphere last Thursday, Kruger did what he always does, dances and cheers. He dances with enthusiasm and sometimes disgrace. He cheers along, along with the cheerleaders and displays his own moves. I really like songs that have lyrics to them so I can like point and be like, oh, you know, to the window, to the wall, and I can like, you know, use my surroundings to you know, dance to it. I don't really know like dance moves. I just just make move stupid and make a fool of myself. So Kruger can be seen entertaining the crowd at both men's and women's basketball games this season. Building a championship team is tough as you have to have all the right pieces at the right time. But UNC basketball found one of those puzzle pieces in junior forward Dominic Lee. I love I wanted so I wanted something new. Mm -hmm. Um something somewhere that's close to home. Um Flight-wise, my mom is only an hour away, so I, I just felt like it was just a perfect spot between me. Coach B.J. Hill liked what he saw from Dominic Lee while he played at Casper College, even with previous injuries. Um, very efficient, you know, had some, had some shin injuries and really limited his minutes in junior college, but when you look at what he produced per minute of playing time, it was actually very similar to Derek's output. Fellow forward Tim Huskisson believes that intimidation is what Dominic Lee brings to the court. Well, if you see him with his shirt off, it's uh, we call we call him Rambo. Um, <laughs> when he first got here, he was Rambo, and I was like, Dom, put a shirt on because it's like literally his body was just so mature. Though Dom wouldn't say it was intimidation, but more about bringing a defensive mind to the game. Probably defense and rebounding. Um, I pride, I take pride in my defense, and I take pride in rebounding, and then after that, everything else just comes. Coach B.J. Hill would agree, and then some. So far, his rebounding per minute has, has been tremendous. You know, his energy on both ends has been great. Um, but I tell you, the thing that's been the most impressive is, is his level of communication. Uh, Dom's a great communicator on the floor and really, really does a great job of, of doing that, which gives his teammates confidence. Reporting from the Auxiliary Gym inside Butler Hancock, I'm Nathan Fusco, Bear News. We all know that pizza can be simple and fast, but why not make your own in the same amount of time it takes to have it delivered to your home? This week I'll take you through how to make personal pizza rolls. This Italian dish is perfect for any American twist and is popular for all ages. It's very simple and only requires a few ingredients. What you will need is pepperoni, mozzarella cheese, and a roll of Pillsbury dough pizza crust, thick or thin and unflavored dental floss. Open the can of pizza crust and then roll the dough onto your work surface so that it is flat and is in the shape of a square. Lightly spread tomato sauce evenly onto the dough. Throw your pepperoni on top, followed by cheese sprinkled over the top. Add any additional items and veggies if desired. Now the time has to come to roll up your dough. Go ahead and start on one side of your dough and begin carefully rolling your dough like a cinnamon roll so that all the ingredients do not fall out. Continue rolling until your pizza roll has been made. Slide your floss underneath the roll, pulling the floss up and crossing it as if you were about to begin tying your shoe and then pull down. This will allow the rolls to slice evenly without squishing your dough. Next, place the rolls in a greased 9 inch cake pan. Bake at 375 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes or until golden brown. 
Serve your pizza rolls with your favorite marinara or dipping sauce. And just like that, you have a simple meal made within 30 minutes. This will leave any pizza connoisseur satisfied to the very last bite. Well, I've rolled it all out for you. Now it's your turn to create your own. From one chef to another, I'm Emily Goggins, Bear News. It's time for our Pinterest pick of the week. Some say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. To start off your busy day right, try adding some grapes or any other fruit along with some protein. While you're at it, don't be afraid of throwing in some carbs to balance out your daily diet. That's it for this episode of Bear News. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week. Until then, stay up to date on our Facebook and Twitter. Oh, <laughs>